response do not constitute my only subject of inquiry and investigation. Let me now move on to the second stream of my talk here. And I have an epigraph here, one that's taken from my favorite Russian poet, Vladimir Mayakovsky, and I quote, our planet is poorly equipped for delight. One must snatch gladness from the days that are. In this life, it's not difficult to, to, to die. To make life is more difficult right now. In my reckoning, Jivananda Dash is surely one of the greatest poets in the world. One whose words and works and words have by now proven to be hospitable to an infinite number of interpretations, so to speak. Of course, it is no news that Jivananda Dash was quite neglected during his lifetime. Initially, Rabindranath Thakur did not take Jivananda Dash seriously at all. Rabindranath's first reaction, to quote in my own quick translation, to show off strength is no sign of strength. Rather, it's opposite. Banglai Rabindranath Thakur said, Jor Dekhano, Jorir Lokhan Nar, Bhavantitai, Urdu. Chamatkar statement. I love this statement. In the statement in its own right is great, I must say. So anyway, and I thought Rabindranath was inordinately harsh and even gruffly dismissive, while Rabindranath's later reaction was blatantly brief, somewhat curt but favorable, inadequately though, as Rabindranath briefly and only spoke of the pleasure of looking at Jivananda's poems, thereby pointing to the sheer profusion of visual images in his poetry. Even Kazi Nazrul Islam, my all-time favorite poet, went to the extent of making fun of Jivananda Das, saying something to this effect, for Jivananda, metaphor is more important than mother. <laughs> मायर चे उपमायबरिंग to the extent that he could. But I would still argue, I would still argue that his deep sympathy for Jivananda Das notwithstanding, even Buddha, by calling Jivananda Das the Nirjanatama Kobi, or the loneliest poet, in my bad translation, admittedly, I'm nowhere near Professor Prokhanalam. So, ultimately failed to do justice to Jivananda Das's otherwise staggeringly, mind-bogglingly, wide-ranging poetic oeuvre, say from his first collection of poems called Jhara Palo, published in 1927, and his Bhushor Pandulipi, published in 1936, to Bonlata Shen, published in 1942, and Moha Prithvi, published in 1944, and Shakti Tarar Timir, published in 1948, to Jivananda Dashe Sreshtho Kovita, published in 1954, to his posthumous collections, such as Rupushi Bangla, published in 1957, and Vela Ovela Talvela, published in 1961. Now, following Jivananda Dashe's death, however, there has been an incredibly prodigious, phenomenal 
explosion of critical works on him. Countless essays and numerous books have already been written about his work, about particularly, if not exclusively, his poetry. Well, of course, Jivarananda Dash has proven to be an unshakable, undeniable, visible or invisible, direct or indirect influence on subsequent generations of poets. Today, critics and readers invoking Western figures or Western critical paradigms and approaches find in Jivananda Dash's poetry all kinds of things such as Danes conceits or discordia concords, Keatsian sensuousness, Baudelarian, Malarvian, and Rambovian, Berlinian symbolism, Poesque enigma and dreamlike topos, Yeatsian occultism and flair for the mythopoetic, even Frostian deceptive and dramatic simplicity, William Carlos William Williamsian imagism, and so on and so forth. The kind of synesthesia, or what I wish to call intersensory experience, that the French poet Baudelaire memorably and famously speaks of in his deeply aestheticized and perfectly crafted sonnet called Correspondences, or even Rabindranath Tagore himself speaks of on some of different registers, is, is always already exemplified in the work of Jivananda Dash, as the critic Alakranjan Dash Gupta once pointed out and rightly pointed out. And of course, and of course, a whole host of critics have been by found in Jivananda the, the elements of many painting or arts-related movements or schools like Impressionism, Abstract Expressionism, Dadaism, Surrealism, Acmeism, Constructivism, Futurism. In fact, recently I had an interesting conversation surrounding the possibility of the presence of the futurist elements in Jivananda Dasha's poetry with none other than my great respected teacher, Professor Kapulam, just a few days back. So futurism, you know, and then by the grace of contemporary literary theory emanating from the, from the, from the metropolis, critics have also found in Jivananda, even Lacanian Christevan Jusson's Deridian playfulness and Surrithoff are under erasure, Bhavayan hybridity and even mimicry, and of course anti-modernist modernism or even post-modernist elements. The list I have hitherto provided here, rather deliberately but quickly, is by no means exhaustive, but it is intended to convey a sense of the bewildering textuality and intertextuality of Jivananda Dasha's work that all kinds of critics have by now pointed out one way or another. And just this morning I had a conversation with Professor Kapulanam again. I just can't resist mentioning him repeatedly here. This is very relevant to my project. So he said, Jivananda Dasha, as he rightly pointed out, I hope I'm not really preempting some of the things that you intend to share with our audiences here, but I can't resist saying this. Well, Jivananda Das intertextually played with a whole host of poets, particularly Dylan Thomas, even Dylan Thomas, I would say, even Dylan Thomas and Jivananda Das are stylistically quite different also. And of course, uh, Emily Dickinson, Jivananda Das got his, you know, this incurable predilection for the dashes from where? from Emily Dickinson and poets and other poets, very intertextually engaged poets, no doubt. Now, as for Jivananda Dasha's broad thematic conceptual constellations and preoccupations in his poetry, I think one can go on and on naming them in a great variety of ways. For example, ennui and alienation, existential crisis, and even the utter meaninglessness of life as well as Eugene Ionesco-esque absurdity, anonymous melancholy. You know, Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice uh, begins with this line, Antonius' words, I know not 
why I'm, I'm so sad. In sooth, I know not why I'm so sad. The human understanding says the same in a number of ways, you know, but that's not only you. That's not the human I'm concerned with here, though. So anonymous melancholy, the tensions and transactions between the temporal and the timeless, reminding one of Dante's ill punto, ill punto acqui tutti li tempi sonni presenti. I just couldn't resist quoting Dante in the original Italian. I love the musicality of Italian. I tried to learn a bit of Italian at one point. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to quote <laughs> none other than the great epic poet Dante in the original. Il punto, il punto acqui tutti li tempi sonni presenti, which means this time past and time future are all contained in time present. By the way, this line was taken up by T.S. Eliot himself in one of his major poems. But anyways, so I was talking about, you know, the, the, the tensions and transactions between the temporal and the timeless in Jovan Aldous's poetry. And then you have, in his poetry, the metaphysics and the physicality of language and love, the beauty of Bengal's face or nature, over-determined ecological consciousness, feminist topoi, and the pitfalls of man's feminism. And also the question of the Tao of nothingness, prehistory and history and geological time, geographical, cartographical imagination, even the subject of ideational mystification and obfuscation, as can be particularly, if not exclusively, exemplified in his great but relatively unknown poem called Timir Shurje. War and peace, nocturnal romance, the death of romance as well, social conflicts, deep nostalgia, Kurivachur Age, Kiholo. The corruption and hypocrisies of middle class politicians and businessmen, moral decadence in contemporary society, deadly pessimism, yet sunlit optimism, mark such lines as Jivon Tobu Niralok Hue Rabe Kotodin. Jivon Tobu Niralok Hue Rabe Kotodin. 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 From his interestingly titled poem called and even the question of revolution as a theme, it is not only interesting but also suggested that Yamananda Dash has used it directly in his poetry, the word Biplog or revolution, more than a hundred times from, say, at least Mahaprithivi to Shakti Karatimi to Vela Ovela Kalvela, not to mention numerous poems discovered after his death. In any event, one can easily see that poetics, politics, and philosophy profoundly intersect in the poetic spaces forged with boundless energia and elan and eclat by Jivananda, whom I cannot but compare to the greatest Latin American poet, Pablo Neruda. Their different locations, traditions, and stylistic signatures notwithstanding. Now, I'll make some more general observations quickly about Jivananda Das before I take up my own particular concern, which has to do with a relatively unheeded area of Jivananda Das's work. True, Jivananda Das has most effectively and influentially shaped the idiom of Bengali poetry, modern Bengali poetry, while his persistent concerns with the entire range of places and peoples. By the way, I've been given 30 to 40 minutes. I will try to stick to it. If you get bored, I, th I think you might get bored. I have that in mind. It's time thing. So, uh, while his persistent concerns with the entire range of places and peoples and seasons of his own land fiercely bespeak his, his anti-colonial rootedness, of course, is possible to speak of the post-colonial Jivananandos, to put Jivananda in the plural, like the post-colonial Shakespeare's, the Marxist Shakespeare's, the post-colonial Jivananandos, underlining his brand of poetics that challenges Eurocentrism 
at every turn. Indeed, Jivanamanda's relentless explorations of the historical and the unconscious, accompanied by his explorations of the various rhythms of time and of different spatial contours and constellations, have given his poetry the kind of textures and vectors and balances, as well as stylistic range and flexibility that are totally unknown before him. Totally unknown. And despite their many differences, Jivanamanda, like Pablo Meluda, offers the kind of poetry that responds to, now I quote Neruda here, the mandates of touch, smell, taste, sight, hearing, the passion for justice, sexual desire, a consummate poetry soiled by the pigeon's claw, ice marked and tooth marked, bitten del delicately without sweat drops and usage, while always marking, I quote Meruda again, the sumptuous appeal of the tactile. But, here's a but, but could a poet like Jivananda Das be concerned with utterly unpoetic, even dully prosaic subjects like budgeting and banking? <laughs> like inflation and interest, even compound interest, income tax, royalty, commission, agency business, indenting business, share market, life insurance, the flow of circulation of and thirst for dirty money, the power and magic of money, the bloody exploitation of labor, even what Marx calls fictive capital in the third volume of Capital and the Light in the very spaces of his own poems. I'm the Kovita Kadavanshya, Gurdjit to Jain, Kovita Ipuch. Mark them, Jivananda Dasha's own lines, ones that I feel compelled to quote in the original Bengali here. <coughs> Ready? Ready for this one? Committee meeting a boshe. I'm at the Jani J. Jivananda Dash Lavit Chilen. Nichu Ponte Kohan. The Nichu Ponte Kovi. It act a stereotype. It act a Jivananda Dash here. Jivananda Dash here. Act Matrix Churikra. I'm going to talk to you about the Nichu Ponte of the Paran. What's it? How should it? In Jivananda Dash Uchi 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 Ponte Kohan of the Paran. Ava, Tony. कि भावे बैंगो करे उच्च बंद है कहाँ बोलते कमिटी मीटिंग ये बोले कुकुर के हार दिए कुकुर के हार दिए बजट को रचे गाड़ी गाड़ी मांस वाह बाथरूम में तो वो स्नातों को अंधो दृष्ट चढ़ा आर किचना ये जीवन अंधो बात हो जाती दिस लाइन्स वर बिटन इन 1938 प्रशंगी बजट भावना बोला जाए। But also these lines by Jivan Dondo, also these lines, उच्चू उच्चू factory, bank ने उन्मुख प्रगति जगे आचे, तुम्हारे घुमा है। These lines are written in 1937. Here Jivan Dondo Dash makes fun of the liberal idea of progress. Anticipating the great Caribbean poet Derek Walcott's pronouncement, progress, progress is history's dirty joke. <laughs> and there are more lines, of course. Bohuke bonchito kore du don ki ad don ki ne ni chapa. Badger city. Osta. You want to know that? Badger city government was such. It is a total of problem. So commendation in the guise of condemnation elements that seem to be anticipating the guerrilla linguistics of the Moroccan theorist Muhammad Khayyar Bin. My reading of these stories indeed prompts me to submit that Jivananda Dash himself is, in his short stories, a powerful guerrilla linguist in his own right. Martha how Jivananda Das introduces the main character Avunish in this story, Hishabrikesh. I quote in my book translation here, Avunish has just crossed 50. Bald-headed, 
He has yet a baby face, face, as if he is a baby of swollen cheeks, as if he is fucking innocent. Yet who the hell does 